Hey, a low bar for Jamison Williams. All right. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey everybody, Matt Derry with you on a Monday edition of Locked On Lions. Great to be back on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day on a Monday, October 2nd and um, uh, Tuesday, October 3rd. Yes, Tuesday does come after Monday. What's going on, first place Lion fans? That's right, Lions 3-1 and one after uh, four games, feeling good. They'll get the 0-4 and four in putrid Carolina Panthers coming into Ford Field uh, this weekend. Thanks for making us your first listen, checking us out wherever you get your podcast. We thank those of you that watch every day. We call them our everydayers, whether you're watching on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel or listening, wherever you get your podcast, we appreciate you. We are brought to you today by LinkedIn. Yes, LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Follow on Twitter at Dairy Speaks at Locked On Lions, Matt Dairy Facebook fan page, Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Thank you for subscribing and watching free each and every day. Coming up on the show today, Lions are easing Jamison Williams back in. Yes, Jamison Williams is back. NFL announcing late last week, lifting the suspensions of the players that were suspended for gambling. They're over now. They've ended the suspensions. JMO will be back and eligible to play this Sunday. But if you think this guy's going to be out there catching eight balls for 100 yards, uh-uh. we'll tell you what Dan Campbell had to say momentarily. Also, we got to talk about the state of the NFC and the fact, the state of the NFL, and the fact that the Lions are in really good shape. Uh, pro football focus grades. We're not going to give you the grades from the other day, which we always do because the game was last Thursday. But what about four games in? The quarter mark, as Jim Caldwell used to say, who are the top performers? Who are the bottom rung performers for the Lions through four games? We will do that coming up momentarily as well. And yes, remember this offseason, the talk about the Bears and Chef Poles. Chef Ryan Poles is cooking something up in Chicago. Give me a break. The Bears are a disgrace. All of that today right here on Locked On Lions. All right, so the big news came out, and I know some of you were tweeting to me and hit me up. Uh, on YouTube and everywhere else about my contacts are killing me today about Jamison Williams. Yes. The NFL has ended his suspension. They've decided they've looked into the gambling stuff and Williams, along with a couple of other players that were suspended for six games, had their suspensions reduced and ended. And so JMO, not only was he eligible to come back and practice, now he can play in games starting uh, this week. Dan Campbell spoke um, today. And look, if you think that they're going to treat this guy like a big gun and a big weapon is coming, uh, not the case. Dan Campbell is basically saying, remember all the old Marty morning wig drop? The bar is high. Well, for J for JMO, the bar is low. Dan Campbell said today, quote, honestly, for me, it's about dependability. That's it. Reliability, dependability. Get lined up. Know where you're supposed to be. We're going to get the correct depth on your routes out of you. And we can count on you to be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. That's it. I'm not looking for yards. I'm not looking for explosive plays. Not looking for touchdowns, said Campbell. Just be a reliable receiver like any of those guys in the room. That's it to me. That's a good year, end quote. All right, I don't have to read anything more that Dan Campbell had to say about Jamison Williams. Look, folks. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be positive. I'm excited he's coming back. But this organization does not think very highly of their former first-round wide receiver. They don't. They don't. Listen to the way Dan Campbell's talking. Dan Campbell is talking about Jamison Williams like he's talking about 33-year-old Marvin Jones. This guy was drafted in the first round. The Lions made a trade last year. 2022 to move up and get him in round one. 
And now they're talking about him like, well, if he could just run a route well, yay, right? The bar is low. They're easing him in. The expect for some of you to think, oh man, we got our deep threat now. <laughs> Not happening. I don't think he's going to get on the field. It wouldn't surprise me if Sunday was inactive the way they're talking about this guy. And again, during training camp, he had some really good moments. Before the injury, he there were times that he looked okay. But listening to Dan Campbell talk about easing him in, and I'm not looking for explosive plays. Like, what? Then why did you draft him in the first round? Like, I know some receivers, like Quentin Johnston for the Chargers, is having a really slow start. All right, I get it. You want to ease guys in, but they are treating this guy like he was some sixth rounder this year that they're having to coddle. I don't think this the coaching staff feels very good about him at all. Gambling suspension or not, injury or not. Remember, he got hurt during training camp. And um, and uh, he had the torn ACL in college. And then uh, what was the injury during camp, if I remember correctly? Do, 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 do. What was JMO's injury? Was it a hamstring? Was it a knee? I'm drawing a blank on what his injury was. But regardless, um, you know, he's just, you know, they're not, they're not hamstring injury. They're not expect. that's what it was. They're not expecting anything from this guy. And look, I think they need to use him. I think that they need him, right? You look at this offense and how well and uh, it's playing. It could do better. Other than the Seattle game, they haven't had a real explosive offense. They pounded Green Bay up front. It's a ground and pound play action pass offense, but they don't have that deep home run threat on this team. The deepest balls Jared Goff has been throwing this year have been to Sam Laporta, right? Khalil Raymond, uh, Khalif Raymond can run a little bit. We know Amon Ra can get by people, but it's not like Jamison Williams is supposed to be the speed demon deep threat. And instead, Dan Campbell's like, well, reliability, golly gee, just catch the ball. All right. So my expectations are low. I'm not going to go crazy about it. And it's obvious that the coaching staff is not ready to roll with number nine just yet. They're just not. You know, they, you know, six games last year. He had what the 41 yard touchdown catch and the 49 yard reverse. And that was it. That was six games, not two, not three. It's not like a LeBron James, not four, not five, but you know what I mean? So bars low. Anything we're getting is gravy. And when you got ultimate professionals in that room, like Marvin Jones, who's been terrible so far, but Josh Reynolds, Amon Ross St. Brown, Khalif Raymond, they set a tone. They, they they raise the bar. Those are pros. The Lions wide receiver room might not be a top 10 wide out room in the league. They might not have Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and all these guys, although the Bengals blow. But regardless, they've got ultimate professionals in there, and that's what Dan Campbell is looking for. And he's not going to mince words. I appreciate the honesty that Campbell is giving the media today. He's basically saying, if he's just reliable and runs his routes well, good for him. They're not looking for big plays. And to me, Brad Holmes has drafted very well. This team is on the right path. We feel good about the Lions, but I don't feel good about this player. And it's obvious the coaches don't either. They don't. Oh, all right. Uh, let's do a little uh, live read here and tell you about our friends at LinkedIn. Then I want to uh, get into some PFF grades. We'll talk about Emmanuel Mosley. We'll talk about being in first place and what I saw yesterday. We will do all of that coming up next right here on Locked On Lions. Matt Derry with you on a Monday. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. All you got to do is create a free job post on LinkedIn Jobs. It's that simple. You add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills 
and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to uh, interview and who you'd like to hire. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions do apply. All right, folks, uh, back on the program here on a Monday edition of Locked On Lions. We are chasing down a couple of guests this week. We're going to have the uh, Locked On crossover on Thursday, get more in on the, on the Panthers. Might be talking to former Panther running back Jonathan Stewart. I'm working on that. Maybe we lob a call to Chris Myers, who will be calling the game this week. We will have another guest either tomorrow or Wednesday. Get you ready for crossover Thursday and everything else. Coming up here is the Lions host the 0-4 Carolina Panthers. Sunday at Ford Field, Lions are installed as an eight and a half point favorite, according to our friends at FanDuel. And really, there's no reason they shouldn't win this game. Last year, Carolina ran all over them, remember? Steve Wilkes and the defense did a really good job on the Lions. But now Frank Reich has that vanilla, oh my God, like the most blando offense known to mankind. And the uh, Panthers under Bryce Young. And this is, this is interesting. C.J. Stroud is playing so much better than Bryce Young right now. And Carolina is uh, is struggling. And if you look at Brian Burns' numbers, he's like not playing well either on the defensive side. So interesting to see Carolina come in. Lions have some revenge on their minds after uh, last year's uh, game. That is for sure. But right now you look at the NFC and you look at the, the trajectory of the NFL and everything else. And uh, I love this. This is fantastic. The Lions are in really good shape. All right, NFC is about what we expected. Philadelphia is 4-0 but they're not playing that well. San Francisco's a machine. Dallas bouncing back yesterday, just poleaxed the Patriots. But then you got the Lions. The Lions are right there near the top. It's the AFC that is not what we thought it was going to be. Everybody thought Cincinnati could go to the Super Bowl. Not a chance. Kansas City is shaky, right? You watch them against the Jets last night. Chiefs are good, but not that good. Um, and, you know, so the Lions just, just being in first place right now, and you see Minnesota struggling to beat Carolina. You see the Bears just blow a 28-point lead against the Broncos. We saw what Green Bay is, which is a decent team, but nothing special. Um, you got to feel good about where the Lions are right now. You feel really, really good. And with this schedule coming up and some very winnable games, I mean, Carolina, uh, the Raiders on Monday night in a few weeks at home. I mean, the Raiders are a, a joke. All right. Um you feel good about where this team is. You really do. If our biggest issue is the fifth wide receiver being Jamison Williams, and then you're in good shape. I love the way they smash the Packers. I went back and watched the game again on Friday, and they just bullied Green Bay. It was bully ball. Push them around. The blocking, the tackling, the basics, the fundamentals. That's what a good first place team does. And it's exciting. So I love what the Lions are doing right now. I absolutely love it. And uh, feels good. Feels good to be in first place. I know it's four games in. I know anything could happen. I know Jared Goff could get hurt. Knock on wood. I know other guys, you know, Ragnow's on 100%. Decker was playing on that bum ankle. And he had a little bit of a setback. Um, but man, the way they're playing, how some of these other teams are playing, like Tampa Bay's off to a great start. Tampa Bay's not going to keep this up. We know watching the Lions, I think they are. I think they are that legit. As far as the PFF grades go, and this is from our friends at Pro Football Focus, through four games, uh, the top five Lion offensive performers so far, grade-wise, Jared Goff is number one at 83.7. Not a surprise. He's had a really nice start to the year. Amon Ross St. Brown's a beast, 82.5. Frank Ragnow. 81.6. Your starting center is just so solid. Sam Laporta coming in at number four is a surprise to me. How good is that? 78.8. And Halapulavati Vaitai, of course, only played two games, two of the four games, a 78.6. As far as bottom five Lion performers on offense, Brock Wright is last, 37.9. Marvin Jones, second last, 39.9. Jason Cabinna, the fullback, who's now injured, 40.4. 
James Mitchell, tight end, 40.7. And uh, Antoine Green, 55.3. Those are your top five and bottom five Lion performers through four games overall on offense. Defense, highest graded Lion on either side of the football is Aiden Hutchinson, 85.3. What can you say about Hutch? Get to the quarterback. Three sacks already, 27 total pressures, um, having a really, really good start. 19 hurries to the season. Brian Branch, no surprise, right behind Hutch at 79.6. Here's a surprise. The third highest graded Lion on defense so far this year is Ify Melifonwu through three games at 75.2. That's awesome. That's awesome. Shout out to future head coach Aaron Glenn and the rest of the defensive staff. They've improved this kid. Again, small sample size, still pretty cool. Aleem McNeil, 74.2, comes in at fourth. And fifth uh, was Josh Paschal, who only, of course, played one game, 73.5. As far as on defense, who's having a rough start to the year? Malcolm Rodriguez, the worst graded player at 30, hold on, 38.2. Second lowest graded defender is Benito Jones, 42.2. Will Harris coming in with a 44. James Houston, 47.2. Jerry Jacobs, 52.4. And Jerry Jacobs could be losing some playing time coming up because Emmanuel Mosley sounds like will return, said Dan Campbell, and play Sunday against Carolina coming back from that torn ACL. There's a reason Brad Holmes went out and signed Emmanuel Mosley. He's a good, good cornerback. Comes from a good pedigree out in San Francisco, in that defense, playing for a contract. be great to have him healthy and back for Sunday's game um, against Carolina. So that is some good news. But those are your top five and bottom five Lion performers. Here are four games in, the quarter mark, although it's not really the quarter. It was the quarter mark when they played 16 games. But now that it is 17. But regardless, that's uh, that's pretty cool. All right, coming up next, I got to take some shots at the Bears. I'm going to have some fun at the, with this because I saw something that I thought was as bad a coaching as you can find. And we knew Chicago wasn't going to be good. I've been telling you that. I didn't think they'd be this bad. And I'm enjoying it as a Lions fan. All right, snap into action this NFL season with our friends at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200, <coughs> excuse me, in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's right, 200 bucks in bonus bets for free, win or lose. You've been thinking about joining FanDuel. There's no better time to get in on the action. We got Monday Night Football tonight. Uh, I don't even know what's playing. Uh, the app is, if you want to bet on Monday Night Football tonight, you want to do the uh, all, all the fun, the over-unders, the, the money line, prop bets, you can do that tonight. Oh, it's Giants. Is it Giants tonight? I don't even know. I wasn't even paying attention. I watched the Jet game last night, and that was good enough for me. Um, and that was actually an exciting game. And by the way, if you're hating on the whole Taylor Swift thing, come on, it's fun. Who cares if Taylor Swift is or isn't dating Travis Kelsey? I think she is, or she wouldn't have been at two games in a row. It made for an entertaining start to last night's game when it was 17 nothing. Anyway, FanDuel, the app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more, like I was saying. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, so yesterday I saw something that I thought was absolutely hilarious and hideous all at the same time. The Lions in their division sit at 3-1, and one, and in dead last at 0-4 is none other than the Chicago Bears. And the Lions and Bears have, have a rivalry. They do. Lion fans don't like the Bears. Bears fans don't like the Lions. Bears fans were sick of the Lions hype this offseason. And many of them were jocking and lathering in the Justin Fields butter this offseason. Yours truly on this show, Locked on Lions, told you do not believe the hype. I told you not to believe the hype from the get-go. Hall of Fields, as I called him, isn't that good. Very good college quarterback. But when you got those receivers at Ohio State and that system, and the, the 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 proofs of the pudding, look at all the players at Ohio State, the quarterback there, JT Barrett, Cardell Jones, Fields, all of them. 
All right now, CJ Stroud looks good. I'm not going to hate on him. But regardless, when you have that kind of talent around you, that kind of offensive line, you play in a pretty weak Big Ten. All right? And don't tell me the Big Ten's great because it isn't. Uh, you could put up some, some video game numbers. And that's what Justin Fields did at Ohio State. I knew he'd be a good college quarterback, but I didn't think the way he holds the football too long, the way he goes through his progressions, that he would be that great in the NFL. And then this offseason, I dubbed him Hall of Fields because I was tired of hearing about the hype. Dan Orlovsky and others putting MVP odds on him was ridiculous. Well, yesterday, Chef Poles' team, that's GM Ryan Poles, remember all the memes about Chef Poles cooking it up? Oh, what a trade to get DJ Moore. Oh, Chef Poles, Chef Poles. Oh, the linebackers. Oh, Chef Poles. Brad Holmes is 10 times the general manager. Chef Poles is. The Bears are a mess, and yesterday they led the Denver Broncos 28-7. to We're blowing out. The Broncos at home yesterday. <clears throat> they blow the game. They get it to 28 to 28, but they're moving the ball. They get down to like the 17 yard line in the fourth quarter. It's fourth and one. All right. If you're Matt Eberflus, who looks overmatched as a head coach, you take the points, you kick the field goal, you take the lead, and you hand it over to your defense, right? You have to. You're at home. Take the lead. You're at home. Nope. Fourth and goal, or fourth and one from the 17. They put Fields in the shotgun, and they hand it off to Khalil Herbert, and he gets stuffed. Gets stuffed. Broncos come down. They kick the field goal. Fields throws a pick. Game over. What a horrible decision. Horrible. You're at home. You haven't won a game. You have a young quarterback that needs a win. Don't put it on him. Why are you handing the ball to Khalil Herbert, this tiny back, and having him run up the gut? You want anybody running, it's the quarterback. Amazing. So, Chef Poles and the Bears are 0-4, and, and I'm loving every minute of it. And this division is so there for the taking this year for the Lions. And we've seen it through four weeks. And my buddy Andy J on threads uh, always points this out, and I said this the other day. The Lions are the best team in this division, and it's not even close. So as long as they stay healthy, play smart, continue to grind these games out with their offensive line, and the defense continues to improve, which we're, which we're seeing. We're seeing improvement from Aiden Hutchinson. I mentioned Melifon. Derek Barnes is a better player now than he was a year ago. Ali McNeil, in better shape, looks like a better player right now. Alex Anzalone has picked up his game. Okay, The Lions have are in very, very good shape. And the Bears, they're already talking about firing Poles and Eberflus. These guys are only two years in. But two years in last year, nobody was sitting here talking about firing Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell. There was some patience. I certainly questioned Dan Campbell's coaching during games when they were one and six. But now look where the Lions are. The Bears are nowhere near that. You got to have a quarterback in this league. You have to. Right. Zach Wilson had two really good possessions last night, and everybody's like, oh, he's back. There's a reason the Jets aren't winning. He's not good enough. Right? The Colts are feeling good about themselves right now because they've got a quarterback finally. Anthony Richardson looks the part. Carolina's not ready yet because Bryce Young's not ready yet. The Lions are ready because Jared Goff is ready. Jared Goff has a chip on his shoulder and is playing winning football and making winning throws and big plays. Right, Mahomes last night. The Chiefs have Travis Kelsey and a bunch of garbage at receiver, but Mahomes is the one that makes these plays. Right, Josh Allen is stepping up ever since a bad week one, and now is is elevating his game. The Patriots, simple. Tom Brady won six Super Bowls. Bill Belichick had a quarterback. Tom Brady retired or moved to Tampa Bay first. Bill Belichick has Mac Jones. Mac Jones isn't good. He might end up being serviceable, but he's not good. Derek Carr and the Saints. Derek Carr plays great. Derek Carr gets hurt in Green Bay. They bring in Jameis Winston. Game was over. Lions have a quarterback, a head coach you can believe in. They're feeling good about themselves. And I don't know. The Bears, I just, I cannot believe this offseason that there were people actually picking Chicago to win the division. Just incredible. All right, that'll do it for Lockdown Lions. Like I said, Chasing down possibly Jonathan Stewart, the former Carolina running back. 
uh, who hosts his own uh, podcast for the Panthers. Possibly Chris Myers. We'll do the crossover on Thursday. Thanks for making us your first listen. Checking us out wherever you get your podcast. Lions and Panthers coming up on Sunday right here on Locked on Lions.